This video is a simple explanation of Afghanistan's current issues. The major events along with those participants are discussed in a chronological order. Afghanistan was ruled as a monarchy for the time period 1933 to 1973. The king was Zaheer Shah. In the 1960s he ran some limited parliamentary elections. Sahir Shah was overthrown by his cousin Muhammad Daud Khan in July 1973. Muhammad Daud Khan changed the monarchy into a republic. Participation of the common public was increased. Muhammad Daud Khan became the first president of Afghanistan. He got support from Afghanistan's Communist Party, People's Democratic Party of Afghanistan, PDPA. He enjoyed strong relations with the Soviet Union. In 1976, he was alarmed by the growing power of the PDPA. He dismissed PDPA members from their government posts. He also announced the dissolution of the PDPA, the Communist Party arresting senior party members. On 27 April 1978, the PDPA and military units loyal to the PDPA killed Daud Khan, his immediate family and bodyguards. PDPA, the Communist Party, seized control of the capital, Kabul. The new PDPA government did not enjoy the support of the masses. The leader was Noor Muhammad Taraki. He violently tried to suppress the dissent. The first communist leader in Afghanistan, Noor Muhammad Taraki, was assassinated by his fellow communist Hafizullah Amin. Amin was known for his independent and nationalist inclinations, and was also seen by many as a ruthless leader. He has been accused of killing tens of thousands of Afghan civilians. The Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan on 24 December 1979, meeting only limited resistance. Amin was removed from power almost immediately, as he and 200 of his guards were killed on 27 December by the Soviet Army and replaced by Babrak Karmal. After deployment into Afghanistan, Soviet forces along with government forces would begin to engage in a protracted counter-insurgency war with Mujahideen fighters. The Soviet government realized that a military solution to the conflict would require far more troops. Because of this they discussed troop withdrawals and searched for a political and peaceful solution as early as 1980 but they never took any serious steps in that direction until 1988. Karmal's leadership was seen as a failure by the Soviet Union because of the rise of violence and crime during his administration. Soviet Union was not impressed with the performance Karmal's administration. Under Mikhail Gorbachev, the Soviet Union was able to depose Karmal and replace him with Muhammad Najibullah. Muhammad Najibullah was the president of Afghanistan for the period of 1987-1992. After the Soviet withdrawal, the Republic of Afghanistan under Najibullah continued to face resistance from the various Mujahideen forces. Najibullah received funding and arms from the Soviet Union until 1991 when the Soviet Union collapsed. The government was dealt a major blow when Abdul Rashid Dostum, a leading general, created an alliance with the Shura-e Nazar of Ahmad Shah Massoud. Large parts of the Afghan communist government capitulated to the forces of Massoud in early 1992. After the fall of Najibullah's government in 1992, the Afghan political parties agreed on a power-sharing agreement, the Peshawar Accord. The Peshawar Accord created the Islamic State of Afghanistan and appointed an interim government for a transitional period to be followed by general democratic elections. 
Pakistan was keen to gear up for a breakthrough in Central Asia. Islamabad could not possibly expect the new Islamic government leaders. In addition, Saudi Arabia and Iran, as competitors for regional hegemony, supported Afghan militias' hostility towards each other. In 1994, the Taliban, a movement originating from Jamiat Alema -e Islam run religious schools for Afghan refugees in Pakistan, also developed in Afghanistan as a political religious force, reportedly in opposition to the tyranny of the local governor. Mullah Omar started his movement with fewer than 50 armed madrasa students in his hometown of Kandahar. When the Taliban took control of the city in 1994, they forced the surrender of dozens of local Pashtun leaders who had presided over a situation of complete lawlessness and atrocities. In 1994, the Taliban took power in several provinces in southern and central Afghanistan. The Taliban started shelling Kabul in early 1995 but were defeated by forces of the Islamic State government under Ahmad Shah Massoud. The Taliban's early victories in 1994 were followed by a series of defeats that resulted in heavy losses. Pakistan provided strong support to the Taliban. In late 1994, most of the militia factions which had been fighting in the battle for control of Kabul were defeated militarily by forces of the Islamic State Secretary of Defense Ahmad Shah Massoud. Massoud tried to initiate a nationwide political process with the goal of national consolidation and democratic elections, also inviting the Taliban to join the process. Massoud had united political and cultural personalities, governors, commanders, clergymen and representatives to reach a lasting agreement. On 26 September 1996, as the Taliban, with military support by Pakistan and financial support by Saudi Arabia, prepared for another major offensive, Massoud ordered a full retreat from Kabul. The Taliban seized Kabul on 27 September 1996, and established the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. Not long before Kabul's fall, Najibullah appealed to the UN for amnesty, which he was granted. However, his attempt to flee to the airport was thwarted by troops of Abdul Rashid Dostum, once loyal to him but now lied with Ahmad Shah Massoud, who controlled the airport. At the UN compound in Kabul, while waiting for the UN to negotiate his safe passage to India, he occupied himself by translating Peter Hopkirk's book The Great Game into his mother tongue Pashto. India was placed in a difficult position by deciding to allow Najibullah political asylum and safely escorting him out of the country. Supporters claimed he had always been close to India and should not be denied asylum, but others said doing so would risk antagonizing India's relationship with the new Mujahideen government formed under the Peshawar Accord. India also refused to let him take refuge at the Indian embassy as it risked creating subcontinental rivalries and reprisals against Kabul's Indian community, arguing that Najibullah would be far safer at the UN compound. All attempts failed and he eventually sought refuge in the local UN headquarters, where he would stay until 1996. Najibullah was at the UN compound when the Taliban soldiers came for him on the evening of 26 September 1996. The Taliban abducted him from UN custody and tortured him to death, and then dragged his dead and castrated body behind a truck through the streets of Kabul. His brother, Shahpur Ahmadzai, was given the same treatment. Now we will discuss Osama bin Laden.
He was a Saudi Arabian citizen belonging to the wealthy Bin Laden family. His father was Muhammad bin Awad bin Laden, a Saudi millionaire from Hadramaut, Yemen, and the founder of the construction company, Saudi Bin Laden Group. 1979, when he joined Mujahideen forces in Pakistan fighting against the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. He helped to fund the Mujahideen by funneling arms, money, and fighters from the Arab world into Afghanistan, and gained popularity among many Arabs. In 1988, he formed Al-Qaeda. He was banished from Saudi Arabia in 1992, and shifted his base to Sudan, until US pressure forced him to leave Sudan in 1996. After establishing a new base in Afghanistan, he declared a war against the United States, initiating a series of bombings and related attacks. The 1998 United States Embassy bombings were attacks that occurred on August 7, 1998. More than 200 people were killed in nearly simultaneous truck bomb explosions in two East African cities one at the United States Embassy in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, the other at the United States Embassy in Nairobi, Kenya. The attacks brought Osama bin Laden, Ayman al-Zawahiri, and their terrorist organization, Al-Qaeda, to the attention of the U.S. public for the first time, and resulted in the Federal Bureau of Investigation FBI, placing bin Laden on its 10 most wanted fugitives list. Operation Infinite Reach was the code name for American cruise missile strikes on Al-Qaeda bases in Khost Province, Afghanistan, and the Al-Shifa Pharmaceutical Factory in Khartoum, Sudan, on August 20, 1998. These were in retaliation for Al-Qaeda's August 7 bombings of American embassies in Kenya and Tanzania. The missile strikes on Al-Qaeda's Afghan training camps, aimed at preempting more attacks and killing bin Laden, damaged the installations and inflicted an uncertain number of casualties. However, bin Laden was not present at the time. The September 11 attacks, often referred to as 9 by 11, were a series of four coordinated terrorist attacks by the Wahhabi Islamist terrorist group Al-Qaeda against the United States on the morning of Tuesday, September 11, 2001. The world-famous World Trade Center buildings were destroyed and the Pentagon was also attacked. In the immediate aftermath of the attacks, Suspicion quickly fell onto Al-Qaeda. The United States formally responded by launching the war on terror and invading Afghanistan to depose the Taliban, which had not complied with U.S. demands to expel Al-Qaeda from Afghanistan and extradite Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden. Although bin Laden initially denied any involvement, in 2004 he formally claimed responsibility for the attacks. Al-Qaeda and bin Laden cited U.S. support of Israel, the presence of U.S. troops in Saudi Arabia, and sanctions against Iraq as motives. After awaiting capture for almost a decade, bin Laden was located in Pakistan in 2011 and killed during a U.S. military raid. Hamid Karzai served as President of Afghanistan from the 22nd of December 2001 to the 29th of September 2014. He was succeeded by Muhammad Ashraf Ghani Ahmadzai who served as President of Afghanistan between September 2014 and August 2021. The Afghan peace process the U.S. has been on the ground and directly involved in the war for 18 years, with analysts describing the situation as a stalemate. Although Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan and Pakistan are now considered to be diminished, the war with the Taliban insurgents continues. Ending the 18-year conflict has eluded former U.S. presidents, 
and Donald Trump said that he considers the war too costly. The Afghan peace process comprises the proposals and negotiations in a bid to end the ongoing war in Afghanistan. Although sporadic efforts have taken place since the war began in 2001, negotiations and the peace movement intensified in 2018 amid talks between the Taliban, which is the main insurgent group fighting against the then Afghan government and American troops, and the United States, of which thousands of soldiers maintained a presence within the country to support the Afghan government. The U.S. ambassador to Afghanistan warned that a peace agreement could risk the Taliban coming back into power. Besides the United States, major powers such as China, India, Pakistan, Russia, as well as NATO play a part that they see as facilitating the peace process. A peace treaty was signed between the U.S. and the Taliban on February 29, 2020, which called for the withdrawal of American troops from Afghanistan within 14 months if the Taliban upheld the terms of the agreement. The provisions of the deal include the withdrawal of all American and NATO troops from Afghanistan. A Taliban pledge to prevent Al-Qaeda from operating in areas under Taliban control, and talks between the Taliban and the Afghan government. The deal was supported by China, Russia and Pakistan and unanimously endorsed by the UN Security Council, although it did not involve the government of Afghanistan. Despite the peace agreement between the U.S. and the Taliban, insurgent attacks against Afghan security forces were reported to have surged in the country. In the 45 days after the agreement, between March 1 and April 15, 2020, the Taliban conducted more than 4,500 attacks in Afghanistan, which showed an increase of more than 70% as compared to the same period in the previous year. Talks between the Afghan government and the Taliban began in Doha, Qatar on September 12, 2020. The negotiations were set for March but have been delayed over a prisoner exchange dispute. On December 27, 2020, Faraidun Khuzun, spokesman for Afghanistan's High Council for National Reconciliation announced that a second round of talks was due to begin on January 5, 2021 in Doha. On March 6, 2021, Afghanistan's President Ashraf Ghani expressed that his government would be taking forward peace talks with the Taliban, discussing with the insurgent group about holding fresh elections and forming a government in a democratic manner. On April 13, 2021, the Biden administration announced that it would withdraw its remaining 2,500 troops from Afghanistan by September 11, 2021, on the 20th anniversary of the September 11 attacks. The U.S. government also reiterated support for the Afghan government regarding a possible Taliban military victory. On July 5, 2021, the Taliban announced their intention to present a written peace plan to the Afghan government in August. This has not been done. Sources claim that on August 12, 2021, Abdullah Abdullah, the chairman of the High Council for National Reconciliation, handed in a plan titled, Exiting the Crisis, which was shared with the Taliban. The sources say that the plan calls for the creation of a joint government. On August 15, 2021, following the 2021 Taliban offensive and the near seizure of the capital Kabul, the Taliban occupied the presidential palace after the incumbent President Ashraf Ghani fled the country to Tajikistan. Kabul Airport Evacuations since the Taliban had seized all border crossing, Kabul airport remained the only secure route out of Afghanistan. Panic spread among the civilian population as the Taliban began seizing the capital, 
with many citizens rushing to their homes or to the airport, which remained under NATO control after the Afghan government dissolved. A chaotic situation developed as thousands of fleeing Afghan civilians rushed to Kabul airport, with hundreds crowding the tarmac in an attempt to catch flights out of the city. Some had climbed over boundary walls to enter the airstrip. Video footage emerged showing hundreds of people running alongside a moving U.S. military C-17A transport plane taxiing on the runway. Some people could be seen clinging onto the aircraft, just below the wing. Others were running alongside, waving and shouting. At least two people, in an apparent attempt to stow away, were reportedly shown to fall from the undercarriage immediately after takeoff. Another body was later found in the landing gear of the C-17. 54. One of the victims is identified as Zaki Anwari, who had played for Afghanistan's national youth football team. Resistance With the fall of Kabul, former Northern Alliance members and other anti-Taliban forces based in Panjshir, led by Ahmad Massoud and former Vice President Amrullah Saleh, became the primary organized resistance to the Taliban in Afghanistan. Please like the video and subscribe the channel.